came to the park as a non-Christian and he's back here now as a Christian. Thanks Amen. be to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Evangelism in the park is working. I was told last week that four Muslims in Manchester, Jamaica all became Christians just last Sunday. I received an email this week, sorry, I got told this week by an evangelist who spoke to the person directly that an Englishman of no particular religion has been watching our videos and has become a Christian. Here is another brother who has come to the park and has become a Christian. Michael, back here, have two Muslims who have become Christians in his fellowship. In my churches that I go to, two different churches, we have baptized one girl from Saudi Arabia and one girl from Turkey who are both Muslims. Believe me when I say our evangelism is effective. Christians, learn from what works. Your softly, softly, do-gooder, fluffy kind of Christianity that lacks the sacredness of the divine does not speak to Muslims, but bring them solid theology, strong identity, clear values and ethics, sound doctrine, a knowledge of the history of the church, and surround them with the community that they need, and Muslims can, do, and are becoming Christian. Thanks be to God. Thank the Lord. Yes. Jesus is Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. Any questions before I go? Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Thank you then so much for listening, being so patient, especially you guys being here all the time. Okay, right then, are we good to go? Brilliant. So guys, so I'm good to start, yeah? Fantastic. So guys, I want to just do a video because obviously we want to talk about Christianity here as well. Um, and this is actually more for the camera and for you guys that are watching at home rather than anything else. But um, I want to draw your attention to the first epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. And this is something I've spoken on many times, um, but I want to draw something out for you, which is that it says in Scripture, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Now that, that verse that we're quoting there is, I believe, from Deuteronomy uh, 10.15, but you can find its parallels in Isaiah... 43.20, Isaiah 61.6, 66.21. Um, you can also see it in 1 Peter 2.5, Revelations 1.6. And basically, it's this idea that the people of God, both ancient Old Testament Israel and the New Covenant people, are meant to be a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And it's that royal priesthood that I want to focus in on. Because what does it mean to be a priest? It means that you offer a sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the light of God's mercy, to offer your souls and bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord our God, which is your act of worship as a sensible people. So in Scripture... We're called to be priests. And I want to show you an image from the Old Testament of how Nehemiah behaved as a priest. So Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, 
reads this. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, while I was in Susa, the capital, that Hanani, one of my brothers and some of men from Judah, came and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and had survived the captivity and about Jerusalem. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now, day and night, on behalf of the sons of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the sons of Israel, which we have sinned against you. I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you amongst the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though those of you who have been scattered were in the most remote part of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I had chosen to cause my name to dwell. Nehemiah, as a priest in the holy nation, the royal priesthood, is praying on behalf of all the Israelites. He's praying for the remnant in Israel, those who were in Jerusalem. And he is fasting and praying night and day and imploring the mercy of God upon the people of Israel. This is the image of a priest. This is what you are called to be when in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 it says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Well, what does a priest do? They beseech God on behalf of others. You should, with fasting and prayer and great urgency, be crying out to God for the church, for the people of God, for those who call themselves Christians. You should appeal to God. Now, we've got a, a wannabe jihadi here who's come to interrupt. Then that's all right, because in a few moments, I'll challenge him about his beliefs and he'll go running. So, what we as Christians should be doing is standing up by jihadi. Um, what we as Christians should be doing is, is appealing to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our great high priest. He is the priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And we who are part of his body are also priests in the order of Melchizedek. He is the high priest, we are the low priests, and we should be interceding to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, offering our prayers to the high priest who will offer them before the Father for our people. And who is that that we're talking about? We're talking about, we're talking about the church. We're talking about, and we've got uh, another jihadi, another jihadi wannabe harassing us. And that's what they do in the park, guys. That's what they do in the park. It, 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 this is what will happen to all of us if we stand idly by and allow the Muslims to gain the dominance. This kind of harassment that you see in the park will happen to us all. And this is why you should fight against Sharia and fight against Islamists. Don't be pacifists. Don't be weak in the face of this kind of supremacist crap. Stand up to them. Coming back to our topic. You need to be praying and fasting before God in periods of great intensity, night and day, calling for God to bless his church, calling for God to, um, to draw out the truth, to draw out uh, his virtue in us, 
to redeem us and to have mercy on us. Pray with prayer and fasting for your families, for your friends. Intercede night and day with prayer and fasting, giving up food. This is the kind of biblical prayers that we're called to. This is the kind of biblical intercession. By jihadis, this is the kind of biblical intercession that we as Christians are called to. Are you doing it? This is something that we should be doing as Christians, to pray for those that God has put in our life, within the church, within our families, amongst our friends, amongst our work colleagues, to intercede for them. And to do that with prayer and fasting, that means going without food for more, for 24 hours and more, literally, just go without food and pray. Pray for the world, pray for the church, pray for your families, pray for your friends. That's biblical intercession. You're called to be a priest. You're called to lay down a sacrifice. Paul said in scripture that he poured out his life like a libation, like a, a poured out offering to the Lord. And that is, as Christians, what we should be doing. And part of that is prayer. And the reason why I wanted to talk about that is because I've obviously talked about prayer many times to get Christians to pray less and do more. And I stand by those words. Like, like we need to be acting, not just praying, and not using prayer as an excuse for not acting. But prayer is an essential part of our life as priests. And we are priests. And therefore, we should pray as priests, sacrificially offering up to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, calling upon the mercy of God for the church and for the world. Thanks be to God.